Hello everybody and welcome back. So I'm back after about a week's of not pouring, so apologies. Um, been busy with a lot of things and unfortunately work gets in the way. Um, but I decided today to do a, um, a green pour for you. I watched Julie Cutts on Pouring Your Heart Out and she, she did a flip cup pour uh, with mainly green so uh, I know she didn't get the results that she wanted but I really like the colours so I thought I'd give it a go so let me show you my colours um, I have some titanium white so they're all Montmartre colours okay so they're all the large studio acrylics um, this one's the sap green so I've got some titanium white I mixed that, uh, so I put in each cup, they exactly mix the same. I've got 50 grams of PVA glue, 10 grams of water, so that's 60 grams of pouring medium, and 60 grams of paint. So I mixed them one to one. Um, so I've got titanium white, I've got some Viridian green, okay. I've got some light green, that one mark got light green, kind of a a bright lime colour. Instead of using black, I mix some Payne's grey because that's where um, Julie says she had some issues. Because the, the moment the Montmartre black is not um, working great. I don't know if they changed the manufacturing um, process or the stuff is mixed differently. But anyway, I got Payne's grey. This one's turquoise, standard turquoise. So you'll see it leaves a tiny amount on the mount. So that's what you want when you want to do a, a flip cup pour with, um, to get cells. And this one's the sap green that I showed you earlier on. The same thing. Okay, so I have a 30 by 40 centimeters canvas. So the way I calculate how much paint I need, so for flip cup pours only, you need a bit more paint than you think you do. It allows you to move your paint around and get cells shaped the way you want them to be. So, um, so I see 30 by 40, that's three plus four, that's seven, so I need 700 grams of paint. So in each cup I've got 120, so I've got slightly over uh, 700 which is perfect okay so i need to add some silicone oil so this one i just found online it's just self standard treadmill silicone oil it's about a fiver it lasts for about eight, over a year so good investment so if i've got 120 grams technically you're supposed to put about a drop per 30 grams but that's a bit too much so I'm just going to put three drops in each cup, apart from the white. I don't need any in the white. So I'm going to put three drops of silicone oil. One, two, three. 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 Give it a good stir. And then we'll be able to layer our cups. So I do stir it well. Some people just like to give a couple of, of stirs, but I like to stir my silicone in well. Do any blobs. Um, the paint spray is going a bit thick. I mixed my paints yesterday actually. I let them rest overnight because I only made a new batch of pourer medium, so I didn't want too many air bubbles. Um, and I kind of feel they're all fairly similar consistencies apart from the paint square. He feels thicker, but it looks okay. Oh, I'm going to give it a go as it is. Okay, so let me put my gloves on because I know this might be messy. Oh, there's one. And two, sleeves up. Okay, so I've got three cups. 
So I stop layering. So I'll try to alternate um, dark light, dark light. Kind of works. The maturity of them are opaque, but I do have silicone, so that should help create the cells. So might not, not automatically get um, cells created between the opaques and the transparent, semi transparent colours. I'm going to do two layers, so I'm just putting back half of my paint to start with and then I'll put the second half afterwards. So, that's the Viridian. Let's go with the light green. So you notice you layer your colours and if they're all the right consistency and similar or the same, not just similar, the same consistency, they will sit on top of one another, okay? Not one of them will sink. If one sinks, it means it's um, heavier than the others. It sinks at the bottom. So you want nice layers. So that's the first thing you need to learn or play with, get confident with. It is the consistency of your paint. And there's no magic recipe because everybody's got different pore mediums, different glues, different paint brands. So you have to literally experiment, play and see what works with what you have or use at home. So there's my turquoise. And then this sap green. I did very soothing to lay your marker because I know a lot of people find it really boring and laborious, but I really like really nice layering cups. Oh dear. Okay, so that's my second layer. So back to the titanium white. So I can finish my cup because so I don't want a third layer. So I'm just going to evenly distribute what's left in my cup everywhere. out of the way and the viridian green this cup it's not enough to save up for something else so let's create the bottom of the cup the light green You don't have to layer your cups in exactly the same manner, you know, you don't have to keep the same order. I just do it for practical reasons for videos because it's quicker for help. Instead of me having to think, oh, what did I put in this one? And, you know, just to make sure that the quantities are split. But for the pores that I do, I kind of my own um, without um, filming them, basically. Sometimes I do lay your markups in different orders as you get different results. I mean, even having layered cups in the same manner, same order, um, 
hopefully with the same quantities of paint in each you still get different results you know two cups will not give you exactly the same uh, color dominance or so you know you still don't really know where you're going to get but so it's just nice to um, to play and see what how much you can control the whole process not much Uh, just one more and then so I'm just finishing off my turquoise and I've got my sap green and be able to layer our uh, not layer flip our cups so that's the turquoise nearly finished making sure I stick to a nice layer there okay but not least the sap green those layers uh, I hope you can see the layers obviously the um, swifty bits there that's just where I'll put a touch to cut but they're all the same consistency so they will sit nicely on top of one another without any issue okay so let's flip these cups so one two uh, we need to let the paint run down a little bit it takes a few seconds so we just need to be patient and what my hands in there I've already got um, a couple of cells there with a the paint square that nearly looks uh, like a phthalo blue but with the lovely turquoise ring around so hopefully it's promising Thing there but that's going to be flipped out right just going to when I've got quite a bit of paint there just to help with the flow that's going to be tipped over but that helps the paint flow over the sides I'm just looking up last one a lot of uh, sap green on this side so yes one color will kind of be dominant uh, when you flip your cups and I said it doesn't matter if you lay it them exactly the same way so you've got more sap green there you've got more turquoise there that's a mix of both on this first cup so interesting well I'm just gonna move my empty cups out of the way for now do I have a little bit left there or do I could use that just for make sure the corner and the sides are properly covered going to do I'm going to spread my paint a little bit more before I torch because as soon as I torch the cells will pop up so got a bit of cardboard that I can use not to waste too much paint 
So I'm going to place it there, hold, um, oh, hold the cardboard so it got stuck there. There you go. And I will gently take the paint, moving it left and right, left and right, like on a boat. You know, yeah, but it's gone a boat trip. And bring it back. I'm going to do the same on this side because there I've got kind of stripey effects because of the bottom of the cup and obviously I need to tip this over. Oh, big bubble there. I've got three or four really big bubbles. So the torch will deal with that. Okay, so let's do the same on for this side. So gently lift it and We can put this aside, there's no need, so we need to bring the weight of the paint back so we can go towards this area. Okay, so we just turn it around. So you see by two things happen when you move your paint. So existing cells will be stretched, they'll be kind of made bigger, stretched, and new ones will appear. See the little ones. So first thing first, let's torch to try to get bring some cells, more cells to the surface, and then we can work on our composition. So nice and high. You want to be at least twenty centimeters or maybe a foot over your canvas, you don't want to burn your paint and if you get too close you're just going to get clusters of cells like going crazy. So you go slowly over several times, never stop anywhere. Just keep hovering all over, all over. Still starts happening. And nice reactions. If your consistency um, is too thick, the cells will struggle to come up to the surface. If it's too thin, you're going to have hundred and hundred cells but they will not be nicely shaped they will be all the form because they need some sort of thickness and consistency you know to be decent to stay around otherwise like free flowing for everybody which could be um, a little bit too much right then I'm going to stop there because I'm going to start burning more paint or all right, so I'm make sure that's closed. Yes. Okay, so you see that's all growing as we go along. I'm just going to leave it one second. Okay. So let's try, we're going to do the same thing. Go on the boat, take the paint towards that area there. So first to cover this edge and it will allow us to um, expand the size of these cells and stretch them. So let's give it a go. Just hold the canvas underneath. And left and right. Okay. Now, very gently, I'm gonna to try to go over that corner this one and bring it back okay so there's not as many cells in that area I'm going to try to torch again see if I can bring more interests 
in certain areas. So let's go back to torching. Overdo it because it's just on the, on the uh, borderline overdoing it, so just got to be careful. See, all these have popped up now. That is nice. Now I need to work out what I want where they are getting distorted, which I don't like. I'm trying to move my paint to see actually what areas I want to keep. Just tilting, tilting. Oh, well, I've sacrificed the newly created cells. I'm taking my time there. see it but okay and try to stretch again and by having so much paint on my canvas that's the only way I can try to um, stretch and have a composition that I like to my canvas so what I'm going to do is it there I still don't have many cells on this bottom half the half towards me or nearest to me but the more I basically try to stretch the more out of shape the original ones are going to be so I'm just wiping my hands off the point without having anything dripping. So these are all the original cells. These is where nothing's happening and I kind of overstretch but gives it character. I mean you you decide what you want. It's your painting. Um there are no rules, you know. It doesn't say that you need to have cells everywhere or just in one corner or that you only need small ones and not big ones and you know whatever you like and every day it's your creation there are no um rules on what is aesthetically sorry pleasing and what's not so i'm just going to get one overall torch just to make sure there's no air bubbles and then i uh, will bring it closer <laughs> So this is what I can see. So these are the original cells. So they are multicolored. You can tell. I do like the white ones there with the turquoise. And if I move over there, these are nice as well. Oh, there's something there. I'll use tweezers to pick it out. Must be a bit of dry paint. Okay, so lovely, lovely colors work out well and at the bottom half it's all stretched but there's my the big white blob in the middle looks a bit like a grey alien but hey um, yeah, so at least you can see if you are a beginner um, that's what we mean by the multicolored cell so you've got a round-ish shape uh, let me just find one that's a better example uh, this one and you see you've got 
different colors like the center of this is turquoise then you've got the sap green then you've got the light green and some white and some turquoise again so that's the multicolored sales rings so hopefully um you've learned something give it a go and i'll see you all very soon take care bye bye for now